the plan was simply this. We had uh, over 100 congressmen and senators on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. The sweep was simply that. We were going to challenge the, the results of the election in the six battleground states. They were Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, Wisconsin, uh, uh, Nevada. And, and basically, these were the places where we believed that if the votes were sent back to those battleground states and looked at again, that there would be enough concern amongst the legislatures that m most or all of those states would decertify the election that would throw the election to the House of Representatives. And I would say to you here, Ari, that all of this, again, I was, it was in, in the lanes legally. It was prescribed by the Constitution. There is a provision to go, rather than through the Electoral College, to the House of Representatives. And all this required was peace and calm on Capitol Hill. And at 1 p.m., Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, and Gosar, a representative, started the Green Bay sweep beautifully, challenging the results of Arizona. Here's the most important thing I can tell you about this. The, the thing that we were trying to deal with was, was a media which refused to acknowledge any kind of possible fraud or irregularities. Right. And well, let's get into it. I've given you, Peter, I've given you, I've given you some time here, and I think you, you've, you've explained that, and I'm going to follow up here, and I, I want us to have a, a back and forth, but that involves both of us. You just described a way, yeah, you just described this plan as a way to take an election where the outcome was established by independent secretaries of state, by the voters of those states, and legal remedies have been exhausted with the Supreme Court never even taking, let alone siding with, any of the claims that you just referred to. So legally, they went nowhere. And then you're describing a way that, that the incumbent... Hold on, hold on. You will get your turn. I just let you go for a while. Let's go this back and forth, sir. Then you will use the incumbent losing party's power, that was the Republican Party that was losing power, to overtake and reverse that outcome. Do you realize you are describing a coup? No, I, I totally reject many of your premises there. First of all, the election was still in doubt and would be until it was certified. Second, the idea that, that secretaries of state, particularly in Michigan and, and, and Pennsylvania, were like innocent parties. I mean, Jocelyn Benson and Kathy Bookfar, the secretaries of state in, in Michigan and Pennsylvania, they were put in power by George Soros. Don't you think somebody would have thought of this if the incumbent administration, through the president or the vice president, could just cancel the election outcome because he goes down to the Senate? Well, then a lot of people would try to stay in power. We have an entire system designed to thwart, and I want to say this respectfully, but it's the truth, sure. people like you, to stop people like you who think that you can anoint yourself the reviewers of the voters, of the American people, of what they lawfully did, that you trump the Supreme Court, no pun intended, People like you are what the Constitution are designed to stop, and it worked, and it did stop you. This is Ari Melber interviewing former Trump economic advisor Peter Navarro about his efforts to overturn the results of a free and fair election. And he does so without hesitation because apparently he's just dying for a subpoena from the January 6th committee. Now here's where Navarro gives the whole ball game away. At no point when he's explaining his plan does he say that the election results should be sent back to the states because of XYZ fraud. And of course he doesn't say that because there was no fraud. We already know that thanks to more than 60 court cases where fraud wasn't proven a single time. What Navarro does say, however, is this. That if the votes were sent back to those battleground states, and looked at again that there would be enough concern amongst the legislatures that m most or all of those states would decertify the election that would throw the election to the House of Representatives. That the goal was to foster enough concern that the state legislatures would decertify the election. Not to prove fraud and decertify, but to whip up enough doubt. The point wasn't to prove anything, it was just to push their disinformation campaign to trick people into believing there was fraud regardless of the facts. What he's describing, proudly and openly, on national television is a brazen scheme to steal the election. Period. Now, he does say that this is legal, and technically he's right that there is a legal avenue, but it's a legal avenue when used legitimately. And in this instance, it was not used legitimately. Why? Because again, 
there was no fraud. The DOJ said there was no fraud, the DHS said there was no fraud, secretaries of state said there was no fraud, and more than 60 judges said there was no fraud, including a number of judges who Trump himself appointed. And I know that I repeat that a lot, and I will continue to repeat it until everyone watching can recite it by heart, because that is all the proof you need that what they were doing was not based in anything. Because the election wasn't fraudulent, wasn't rigged, there was no justification to kick anything back to the states. They were perverting legal channels to support an illegal cause. And finally, I find it especially ironic that when Peter Navarro is confronted with the fact that what he was attempting to do was to stage a coup, he claims that it wasn't because the election was quote, still in doubt. But let's think for a second, why was it still in doubt? Because people like Peter Navarro instilled it. Talk about circular logic. Navarro says the election results are in doubt. People then believe they're in doubt because Navarro said it. Navarro then points to the fact that people believe it as justification to move the coup forward. In other words, as long as you can point to people who you just lied to, then a coup is justified because doubt exists. Convenient, huh? And then, on top of that absurd justification that the election was still in doubt until the results were certified, Navarro claims that even after the secretaries of state certified the elections, they were still illegitimate because somehow George Soros was in charge of the whole thing. And look, I'm not gonna entertain this bullshit with a response other than to say, don't you see? There's always an excuse. There's always a conspiracy. They are always the victims. If it's not the machines, then it's the deep state, or it's the judges, or it's the secretaries of state, or it's George Soros, or it's Venezuela, or it's China, or it's Hugo Chavez. They will never admit they're wrong because the whole thing is imaginary. I can stand here and debunk this bullshit piece by piece until I'm 110 years old, but we're not operating in the same universe. They are playing pretend. They are doing make-believe. Everything they say is a lie because the point isn't facts. The point is the disinformation. The lie is the point. Navarro said it himself in this very interview. Their goal was to foster enough concern, enough doubt, that they could move their coup forward. All of the lies and conspiracy theories might seem like our smoking gun that they're all full of it, but in fact, the lies and conspiracy theories that they're drowning in are exactly the point. They want their viewers to drown in the lies because those lies obscure reality. They cause doubt, and that was always the goal. The fact is that the January 6th committee and the DOJ and U.S. attorneys have a very clear job here, to take action against the people who perpetrated these crimes, and they are crimes, or to do nothing and allow them to happen again. That's it. Those are the options. There is no middle ground. And whether our democracy stands depends on whether those with the power to get some accountability take that power seriously. For the sake of this country, and given what we just saw from Peter Navarro on national TV, I really hope they do. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.